Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Thank you so much um, for joining today's event with uh, Dr. Bhaktiv Abdisayev. Um, I will introduce the series and today's talk in just a moment or two to give a few more people a time uh, to arrive. But I'm very grateful to all of you for making the time to join us today. Um, if you'd like to have your videos on, you can do so. I would ask that during the duration of the presentation, you keep your microphones muted just so there's no uh, interference um, with the sound. Uh, if you have questions at any point um, for Dr. Abdi Sayev, please feel free to message them to me, uh, Grace Sewell, or to put them in the general chat and we'll make sure to address them during the question and answer session as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that we can get started. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Grace Sewell. I'm a junior at Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania, um, studying Russian and Spanish. I'm one of the organizers of the series, along with Jose Vergara, professor of Russian at Bryn Mawr College, who was unable to join us today. Um, I'm going to be introducing Dr. Abrisayev and his work um, as well as contextualizing this event, which is part of the Voices from the Eastern European and Eurasian Anthropocene series supported by the Cooper Fund at uh, Swarthmore College. Um, the goal of the Voices from the Eastern European Anthropocene series is to enter into dialogue with artists, activists, and academics from Eastern Europe and Eurasia who present compelling responses to environmental catastrophe in their scholarship, creative work, and activism. Um, together, these speakers address environmental issues through direct action, artistic innovation, and scholarly research, and they offer urgent and interdisciplinary perspectives on how environmental activism is inseparable from ongoing global struggles for equality, governmental accountability, and uh, freedom of expression. To give you just a little bit of an overview of the series so far, this semester we've hosted workshops and conversations with um, Valina Rimbu, a leading voice in Russian eco-poetics, um, as well as workshops and a lecture featuring the prolific environmental journalist Angelina Davidova. Um, next semester, we will be hosting Fridays for Future Youth Activist Anastasia Fomina um, and Nobel Laureate in Literature Svetlana Alexievich. So please stay tuned for more information on those upcoming events. And our past events can be watched on the YouTube channel of the Swarthmore Project for Eastern European Relations. Um, which I will share in the chat for those who are interested. But today I'm very grateful to welcome a speaker who I'm particularly excited about, um, Dr. Bhaktivak Abdurisayev, um, to speak on the title of his lecture is Approaches to Sustainability and Gender Equity in Mountainous Communities Worldwide. Um, Dr. Abdurisayev served as the ambassador from the Kyrgyz Republic to the US and Canada from 1997 to 2005. He currently teaches history and political science at Utah Valley University, and he has advocated for gender equity and sustainable mountain development in collaboration with his students um, at the 2018 United Nations High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development, the 62nd through 66th sessions of the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, um, in addition uh, to other venues, and his political analysis has appeared widely in publications such as the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, Open Democracy, and CNN. He holds a PhD in physics from the Academy of Sciences of Belarus um, and is a member of the Russian Academy of Natural Sciences. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Professor Abdurisayev to start his presentation today. He'll be sharing his screen. And after that, we will have uh, time for a Q&A. Thank you again for being here. Thank you very much, Chrissy. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, a great uh, uh, again honor for me to be part of that uh, Cooper series at the Swarthmore uh, College. And I appreciate uh, for this uh, invitation and for the opportunity for me to uh, share the thoughts and ideas about what we are uh, able uh, to do during that uh, 15 years of my teaching at the Utah University. And uh, I'm really excited to add to this uh, your focus on Eastern European and Central Asian you know, voices, also the voices from Rocky Mountains and also from Appalachian Mountains. 
Why? Because we are becoming a global village. And uh, in particular, also to uh, explain you know, how here the student engaged learning plays a crucial role. And students are becoming a full fledged contributors to that agenda. You know, this is a really exciting. It's, by the way, first the time when I, uh, I'm able to uh, report about it, uh, 15 years of my uh, experiences there. And I would like, first again, to uh, make some acknowledgements here, yeah, with your permission. Yeah? Uh, again, uh, thanks to uh, Jose Vergara and uh, uh, Grace, uh, in particular Grace Sewell, uh, because uh, uh, what we are having now, that format and uh, uh, this, <clears throat> again, approach, it reminds me about student engaged learning where uh, my goal already now with all of the activities to make sure that students will do that on their own. Students will uh, raise money, they uh, handle protocol, everything, and also the moderate events. That's why it's really exciting, uh, Grace. Thank you for all your help for uh, guiding and moder uh, also moderating that event here. Yeah. I also uh, have to say that uh, um, uh, thanks to the, uh, my family, uh, my wife and uh, two children, uh, Victor and uh, Miriam, who are very tolerant what was uh, what was I was doing politically. You know, uh, finally I found a place in Utah. So uh, a lot of challenges, but at the same time we were able to handle that and we're patient. Um, enormous uh, support and uh, partnership from my colleagues at Utah University, Dr. Uh, Rusty Butler. Uh, Ross Butler, uh, Dr. Alexander Steker, and many others, and still continue to do. And uh, uh, special appreciation also uh, to my uh, friends, you know, one of them, uh, Joseph Pitts, uh, he is, by the way, is uh, present here. Uh, I cannot say him partner because he is uh, the bigger than friend and uh, special person during 20 six years probably, uh, congressman from the uh, state of Pennsylvania, represented the Lancaster County, neighboring one with Swarthmore, yeah? And uh, during those years with uh, his close friends, uh, associates with, uh, like, you know, uh, Charles Parker Wright and Mar Margaret uh, Wright and uh, Marjorie Wright, Auntie Marjorie, as I'm saying, she's also here. They were helping us uh, in Kyrgyzstan also to uh, build it, uh, um, civil society, democratic principles, and uh, that model of parliamentary democracy. Because Congressman Pitts was the co-chair of the um, uh, co-chair of the Silk Road Caucus, the uh, US House of Representatives, and at the same time, Helsinki Commission. Mm -hmm. Still every year, they uh, diligently and uh, with a passion, uh, helping us to bring uh, the members of the Kyrgyz parliament to uh, Washington DC for the national prayer breakfast in order for them to learn about how to build that interfaith dialogue by following the teaching of uh, Jesus now. Then also building that parliamentary model of democracy every year. And uh, thanks to that uh, support and efforts, we are able to bring them uh, further those groups to uh, Utah to uh, uh, work with them on sustainable mountain development. Yeah. That's why um, I'm really glad that uh, we have such a strong and powerful uh, relationships and friendships, which are helping us uh, to uh, strengthen and uh, um, uh, make sure that this model, which we were able to uh, develop, yeah, now it uh, works quite successfully. But no, let me now uh, probably uh, share the screen and tell you first, no, mountains. Why are we talking about the mountains here? Yeah? And uh, you see in the title, the approaches to sustainability and gender equity in mountainous communities worldwide. Yeah? So why uh, mountains? First, I would like here to quote the uh, official document of the United Nations. It's the United Nations Secretary General's Report on Sustainable Mountain Development 2019. And it says the following, that mountains cover 27% of the world surface and they provide humanity with the uh, different goods and services. And uh, um, for example, water, food, biodiversity, energy, and natural resources. But at the same time, mountain ecosystems are vulnerable to natural disasters. And first and uh, foremost, climate change related events and unsustainable resource use. So mountains are home to about 1.1 uh, billion people who are among the world's poorest. Half of rural mountain dwellers face food insecurity. 
FAU just recently in the again report uh, 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 announced about it. Uh, we have the progress with the food, uh, uh, I mean, uh, with improving food insecurity in general globally, but uh, in the mountain areas, situation is still really not good. It's getting worse. So these factors make living in mountain areas increasingly difficult and they compel people to migrate, to leave those uh, again, uh, areas and livelihoods. So for the first time, the mountains have been mentioned in the uh, famous, uh, again, uh, landmark uh, uh, event, which uh, all of us uh, probably know, United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, which uh, usually we also name as a uh, Rio Earth Summit. 1992. So chapter 13 of uh, that, uh, again, Agenda 21, the uh, plan for action of the UN had uh, uh, the title, Managing Fragile Ecosystems, Sustainable Mountain Development. So the chapter also included two program areas, generating and strengthening knowledge about the ecology and sustainable development of mountain ecosystems. And then second, promoting integrated watershed development and alternative livelihood opportunities. So for the first time, again, United Nations Forum on such a level highlighted the uh, importance of the mountains alongside the such issues like climate change, deforestation, desertification, and others. So the next step, 1998, the United Nations General Assembly emphasized the importance of the mountains uh, when it declared the uh, 2002 as the International Year of the Mountains. And I uh, need here to emphasize that uh, that uh, initiative was uh, made for the first time by the uh, Kyrgyz Republic and the president of the uh, Kyrgyz Republic in 1997. So <clears throat> it was a, a huge milestone in 2002, uh, a lot of activities which took place uh, around the world under the umbrella of the United Nations, fed into the Bishkek Global Mountain Summit, uh, which was held uh, in October, November in uh, Kyrgyzstan. And uh, the final document of the uh, summit was uh, named the Bishkek Mountain uh, Platform. So the Bishkek Mountain Platform further led to the adoption for the first time, the UN General Assembly Resolution, uh, Resolution uh, which established uh, several uh, important, uh, again, institutions, and one of them was the Mountain Partnership. Under the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, that uh, body, subunit, uh, coordinates the Sustainable Mountain Development Agenda globally. And uh, another important, again, uh, recommendation from uh, the uh, resolution was uh, that on the uh, 11th of December, to observe uh, that the date is International Mountain Day. And uh, now we have uh, uh, more than 60 countries, 18 IGOs, and 322 major groups from civil society, NGOs, and others, uh, which joined the Mountain Partnership. And the Mountain Partnership is uh, headquartered in uh, Rome under the uh, FAO uh, United Nations in uh, Rome. So, in uh, the United Nations uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, there are two specific goals, number six and 15, which contain under them three targets. And uh, those targets are, uh, again, uh, focusing on the importance of world mountains, and uh, in particular, target 6.6, .6, which said that by 2030, protect and restore water-related ecosystems, including mountains, forests, wetlands, rivers, aquifers, and lakes. Target 15.1 <clears throat> by 2030, ensure the conservation, restoration, and sustainable use of terrestrial and uh, inland freshwater ecosystems and their services, in particular forests, wetlands, mountains, and dryland's in line with obligations under international agreements and target 15.4 by 2030 ensure the conservation of mountain ecosystems including their biodiversity in order to enhance their capacity to provide benefits that are essential for sustainable development as you could see uh, the mountains are highlighted they have their own place already in 2030 agenda for sustainable development but the trick here and some kind of uh, maybe uh, um, 
some uh, problem a little bit. Yeah? Uh, that there are three uh, targets which are hidden among the 169 other targets. And that's why it requires a lot of efforts from those who are dedicated to the cause to uh, continue to advocate for uh, those targets. Because uh, very often, uh, not so many people know and uh, they have to be highlighted, in particular, uh, the implementation. So, um, as the person who was, uh, again, representing uh, the Kyrgyz Republic in the United States uh, since 97 until 2005, uh, my main responsibility was uh, to identify the right partners, institutions, uh, again, states, uh, which uh, would be interested in this, uh, again, area, sustainable mountain development. And since 1999, we uh, were able to establish that relationships uh, with, the, again, uh, uh, leadership of uh, Dr. Rusty Butler, by the way, he uh, just joined us as well, and he uh, was the Associate Vice President for International Affairs and Diplomacy at Utah University, and uh, through his uh, energy and efforts, we were able to elevate that relationships, as you could see in such a uh, way that uh, the official uh, visits uh, followed and exchanges, yeah? Uh, so, in 2003, uh, Governor of Utah, Alan Walker, but they're the first and the only for now uh, women uh, governor of state of Utah uh, was able to visit the Kyrgyz Republic. And she invited the president of the Kyrgyz Republic also to come to uh, Utah. And in 2004, he was able to do that in September. And uh, uh, what was again significant about that visit, that president didn't visit Washington, D.C. He just, uh, uh, his uh, plane, uh, uh, flew directly uh, to uh, again Salt Lake, by the way, refueling uh, DC, just refueling at Andrew Abbey's. And then, after two days uh, uh, spending in Salt Lake uh, City, uh, on the way back, he visited the United Nations, talked to the Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Kofi Annan, about the uh, main results and uh, with a focus on uh, sustainable mountain development. So, <clears throat> after that, Maybe if you again uh, follow the uh, chronology and the history of the uh, uh, Kyrgyz Republic uh, becoming an independent state, you know that six months later, a uh, change of regime happened in the Kyrgyzstan. And uh, due to that, a uh, new stage in my life when I was invited by Dr. Uh, Ross Butler to come and teach at UVU for a while. And what I'm, uh, by the way, also uh, doing until uh, now, yeah? So that uh, Utah University is uh, the largest public university in the state of Utah. And it enrolls now currently more than 40,000 students, mainly undergraduate. And uh, what is also interesting about that model that uh, it has a dual uh, mission, uh, uh, according to which uh, Utah today implements the idea that Single institution can serve mainly local communities in Mountain Utah by combining community college and uh, baccalaureate for students. Very interesting model, by the way. Uh, I see that how, for example, in Switzerland, Helvetia is one of the NGOs is promoting this similar type of the model, uh, which is got suitable for the uh, mountain communities uh, uh, to get trained, retrained, uh, in particular with the uh, so fastly moving again, changing market economy. Yeah? So a growing number of uh, Utah Valley University students are non-traditional students. And uh, the students who are range between 25 and 75 years of age, 30% of them work more than 31 hours per week while taking classes. And 39%, they have families to support. And majority of them are enhancing or changing their careers. So. Uh, what is also interesting that uh, nationwide in the United States and in Europe, we could see the trend like in uh, UVU. UVU is, uh, um, again, uh, what is happening at UVU coinciding with trend which exists in, in the United States and Europe. More than 35, 40% of the uh, student body now is uh, uh, represented by the non-traditional or adult students. <clears throat> So, um, as a result of that, again, uh, those efforts, and me already as a faculty joining the UVU, we started to work on a different level. 
not as uh, non official, but uh, on the level of that uh, faculty and grassroots one. And uh, what uh, we were able to do first in 2006, uh, UVU joined the uh, Mountain Partnership, the first academic institution to do that. And Dr. Uh, uh, Butter, Ross Butter became the first focal point for MP at uh, UVU. You could see here also that uh, uh, photo of his uh, wife. Uh, Daniel Butler, she passed away a year and a half ago, but no, uh, she uh, served as uh, the first uh, uh, honorary council of the Kyrgyz Republic to the state of Utah and contributed uh, uh, a huge way to the bilateral relations and exchange. Yeah? So during the 2007-2013, we could see how the invoice from the Kyrgyz Republic uh, it means ambassadors accredited both to the United States and to the United Nations were frequently flying to Utah back and forth and continue to facil facilitate the dialogue. You see, uh, what was again interesting in uh, this situation, you know, uh, my position also was quite clear before, was some kind of critical assessment of the regime in 2005, but despite of those again difference, we were able to uh, maintain the dialogue and continue to work jointly on the, those issues which were beneficial for the Kyrgyz Republic. And here also I uh, have also to acknowledge one more time what uh, Congressman Pitts with his uh, again uh, close colleagues were uh, helping and contributing to that. How to build that relationships, how to build in tolerance and understanding. Yeah? So uh, what we did we have also uh, three visits to Utah of the deputies of the Kyrgyz parliament and from different parties, again, opposition, proposition, uh, whatever. And uh, uh, two key individuals here, one of them, uh, Marat Sultanov, he was at that time speaker of the uh, parliament uh, with uh, his close friend. Until now, they are a very close friendship. Uh, at that time, he was the uh, Utah uh, State uh, uh, Senate. Uh, President uh, Senator Valentine. Uh, so they are uh, here in Utah. And um, as a result of that, uh, those visits in 2008, uh, President Valentine led the, a group of the legislators from Rocky Mountains to the Kyrgyz Republic. So that's why those again efforts were contributing to the uh, uh, this uh, bilateral relations still uh, relationships. Still, as you could see, uh, we had a. Uh, uh, quite extensive uh, uh, partnership uh, uh, on official levels as well. Not a presidential, but, but uh, still, as you could see, uh, parliamentary one, yeah? uh, Good. So what was, again, the focus of the Utah University with the Kyrgyz partners that since 2006, they advocated uh, jointly with the International University of Kyrgyzstan for the sustainable mountain development implementation in the state of Utah in the Kyrgyz Republic and globally uh, by uh, the following the recommendation of the United Nations General Assembly Resolution in 2002, which was adopted here, and uh, first and foremost, to strengthen the capacity building for the mountain partnership. It means uh, uh, having more and more institutions to join the mountain partnership. Second one, as a major event, they also sponsored the hosting the uh, International Women of the Mountains Conference. Uh, focus on the gender issues within the sustained mountain development. And uh, by following the recommendation of that, again, uh, resolution, they uh, tried here to, uh, again, follow up the main event uh, during the 2002 uh, celebration, the uh, conference, which was hosted in Bhutan under the title Celebrating Mountain uh, Women. And the third activity, which became the essential part of the uh, again, initiatives and uh, agenda at the UVU. Uh, uh, again, students and faculty started to observe since 2010 annually, the International Mountain uh, Day on uh, December 11th. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, in 2007, it means a year and a half after my, again, uh, presence at UVU with uh, uh, Dr. Ross uh, Butler and others, we were able for the first time uh, to organize and host the conference, uh, the Women of the Mountains. What was uh, here significant and important that it was done under the umbrella of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and uh, uh, UN DESA, um, uh, several other institutions of the United Nations and uh, uh, conference addressed seven uh, major topics, as you could see, transmitting family values, heritage, culture, health of women and children, 
economic issues of women and children, education of women and children, human trafficking and exploitation, leadership for women. And one also special session was dedicated to the students' presentations on uh, women's issues. Uh, the photo here, by the significant one, for, for the first time we were able to bring here uh, the Kyrgyz youth at the uh, UVU campus. And you could see how that uh, members of uh, the uh, participants of the conference today are uh, taking photo in front of them. What was the result of that conference? The Mountain Partnership and FO recognized the uh, significant contribution for UTVL University for the first time to host the conference under the umbrella of UN in the western part of the United States, uh, where more than 120 participants uh, uh, in, uh, came and uh, contributed to that agenda. Not only officials from the United Nations and uh, ambassadors, but also experts on gender issues from all Rocky Mountain states what was the most significant as a part of the regional network. And uh, more than 20 mountain nations were represented by their scholars and uh, uh, again, experts. And the uh, United Nations Secretary General's report in uh, 2007 highlighted the Utah University for hosting uh, that forum, uh, which ensured an improvement of women's status in mountain communities around the world. You could see here the copy of the document. It's uh, uh, around maybe 22, 25 pages long document, which uh, covers all of the issues around the world. And uh, the paragraph 40, uh, which is dedicated to gender, highlights uh, what the uh, University was able to do. So in 2009, the second uh, uh, report highlighted that uh, the conference established a regional network on sustainable mountain development and gender issues. Uh, network uh, which uh, again worked in Rocky Mountains and also uh, partners with the uh, similar again uh, members uh, network uh, in uh, Central Asia. So Utah University was the only academic institution from North America highlighted in both United Nations documents. So raising an awareness for the efforts of the uh, faculty and students. What was again about the conference uh, uh, important for uh, remember um, in the context of the next again uh, slides that uh, the conference hosted and organized and hosted by the faculty students uh, here played uh, uh, not such a big role uh, in helping to host they just uh, had a again session and made a presentation but in general they were not involved in uh, preparations and the hosting it was done uh, professionally by the faculty and that's why uh, the uh, big uh, achievement uh, for us, it was quite exciting, yeah? So, um, but since 2011, the new step, uh, uh, new development uh, took place at Utah University when uh, we hosted the second uh, conference, Women of the Mountains. And for the first time, more than 50 students have been involved in the uh, preparations and uh, the hosting as a secretariat, as a protocol, media uh, during two weeks. Two, two weeks, yeah. So after the conference, they were so excited and uh, talked to me and Dr. Butler saying that uh, probably this is something uh, important again for us to continue and why not for us to do that through our own efforts, maybe, maybe do that uh, uh, ourselves, but you would be helping us mentoring that is necessary. And uh, as a result of that, we just uh, started to develop a little by little this new model. Yeah? Um, so-called inclusive student engaged learning model uh, and uh, uh, it's based on SEL student engaged learning and what does it mean SEL? Uh, SEL is uh, based on the following principles when uh, the students uh, first are provided a specific problem to study uh, to do that uh, as hands-on activity. Second, they study that uh, problem as a group they need to work as a group, uh, at least maybe six students, yeah? Then uh, the uh, third, again, uh, principle, uh, faculty plays role here as a mentor, not advising directly, does it indirectly. So the mentoring and uh, providing that assistance only when students are not able to find uh, the solution on their own, yeah? And the uh, last principle that uh, students also carry the responsibility for self learning yeah they have to implement that task until the end and then enjoy that uh, uh, results of it yeah? so the model 
which uh, we were able to develop. Uh, so encourages students now across the campus. Uh, it means all, all of the again disciplines, yeah, including non-traditional learners to gain knowledge and networking skills, uh, in particular at the level of the United Nations, by contributing their own initiatives and funds to the SMD advocacy, and then being recognized for it by the mountain partnership. Because you know what they're doing, uh, my goal and uh, Dr. Butler to tie with the uh, agenda, with the requirements, with the rubrics, uh, uh, guiding lines for the mountain partnership. And if those activities uh, again will follow those uh, rules and implement uh, based on that, then uh, mountain partnership uh, would uh, recognize them and highlight them. Yeah? So, um, here you could see again uh, the structure uh, that Utah International Mountain Forum, a coalition of student clubs, became the core of that model, co curricular model. Yeah? Uh, the extracurricular part plays the leading uh, role. Uh, why? Because of the uh, fact that, uh, in general, the uh, United Nations uh, activities and initiatives uh, very often could last longer than one semester. And therefore, it is not uh, easy to uh, develop the academic program, which uh, would be, again, allowing for the students uh, to do that. And therefore, uh, the uh, student clubs uh, were fitting in the, this, uh, uh, again, requirements quite perfectly. And uh, three uh, clubs became the founding ones, Foreign Affairs, Model United Nations, Sustainable Mountain Development. You could see here the leadership, Dallas Curran. He is the current uh, president, and uh, his uh, photo uh, shows how he is moderating the parallel event during the March 2021. It means uh, just uh, last uh, spring, yeah. So uh, Alita Thompson, uh, president of the Foreign Affairs Club, and uh, by the way, she's, this is also an example of that the mountain women and non-traditional student. She has five children, and uh, her again uh, major is uh, global politics. That's why very interesting, you know, to see how um, you know, this student is so uh, interested to combine uh, all of those again responsibilities at the same time uh, opportunities to work through the uh, clubs uh, to get advanced herself and uh, uh, her children as well. Yeah. So Bayan Algami, the president of the Sustainable Mountain Development Club, she is from uh, Saudi Arabia, but also very interesting uh, to see that how that during several years she was able to become very actively involved and during that last session of the commission of status of women she also made a presentation made a statement it posted online she's representing here the mountain communities of saudi arabia and at the same time mountain communities of utah yeah? and uh, uh, andrew jensen he's the president of the united nations model UN club yeah Okay, so more about that uh, details, you know, and specifically how the model works here. Yeah? I added here the uh, link to our academic paper, which was published uh, last uh, um, December in uh, the uh, peer review journal in Switzerland, uh, Mountain Research and Development. So, good. <clears throat> uh, here, uh, further, I would like to show you the, the examples, how that... Uh, uh, student engaged learning worked in particular uh, uh, initiatives with particular initiatives uh, uh, to advocate for the mountain development and mountain targets. Yeah? Uh, the students uh, were able, uh, because the model was created in 2011, so they were able to uh, be in touch with the mountain partnership and be active contributors to the process of the adopting 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. When the mountain partnership uh, 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 submitted three mountain targets as uh, possible candidates among those, again, SDGs uh, to the open working uh, uh, group, uh, which uh, again was led by these two distinguished gentlemen, uh, Ambassador Koroshi from Hungary and Ambassador um, Kamau from uh, Kenya. Uh, the students' role was also to promote where it is possible uh, those three targets to be adopted among the 17 sustainable development goals. And you could see here that how the president of the uh, Utah International Mountain Forum at that time, Jesler Molina, speaks uh, during the uh, one of the sessions, the Open Working Group on Sustainable uh, Development. And the uh, two co-chairs are listening to him at the CASOC chamber. Uh, another important activity was that uh, the 
Dr. Rust has uh, a great help and you view. Uh, we had uh, arranged uh, the visits of the uh, ambassadors uh, from the uh, United Nations uh, to uh, UVU uh, during the 2013-15 year uh, from more than 13 states. And you could see how the students were able, again, uh, during each visit, to have at least maybe 30 minutes uh, to talk, to present their case, to advocate for the mountain targets, and during that process, making sure that those, again, nations will uh, provide their support uh, during that negotiations. Yeah? Ambassador of Switzerland, by the way, the key uh, nation in promoting sustainable development globally. Yeah? Another one, uh, Ambassador of Greece. Uh, and uh, the last one, he is not representing the mountain nation, the president of the uh, uh, president of the General Assembly uh, 2016, but at that time he was the uh, just the permanent representative of Fiji to U UN, uh, Ambassador Peter Thompson, uh, uh, Dr. Rusty Butler, uh, uh, arranged his visit on uh, December 7th, 2015. And it was a, a great uh, opportunity for the students to discuss, you know, why and how that uh, small island uh, states are, are able to provide a very strong and powerful, again, voice at the United Nations for their own cause, and why and how that uh, mountain states could begin follow that examples and uh, uh, do the uh, similar efforts was a great, uh, again, discussion and opportunity and uh, engaged learning for the students. <clears throat> Good, so 2015, as you could see, um, coincided with the major activity of our students when they, uh, for the first time ever, hosted the fourth International Women of the Mountains conference through the student engaged learning. It means uh, during the four semesters, one year, they started from the zero, I mean, raising funds, uh, preparing agenda, preparing the call for papers. And it was done mainly by uh, three students, non-traditional by the way, yeah, who usually have uh, uh, own skills, experiences, they, they are mature, uh, have a responsibility and whatever. And uh, um, uh, they were able to uh, move that uh, process in the right direction, and uh, 79 students also joined during the uh, already the conference and helped uh, with them to um, host it uh, quite successfully. Students from the Utah Valley University, University of Utah, Birmingham University. So conference addressed eight topics. By the way, some of the new topics appeared that in comparison with the previous one, climate change and gender. It's a, a crucial one. And also another one, access to information and public services for women. It means uh, the um, IT development, uh, AI now when we're talking about that. So uh, conference gathered more than 100 participants, uh, United Nations officials, FAO, uh, diplomats, uh, experts again on gender issues. And what was again uh, different here from the previous conferences that uh, students were able to bring here the representatives of more than 13 mountain partnership members. It means those who are already dedicated to the cause of promoting mountain communities around the world. And uh, uh, as a result, they would uh, have a more professional probably approach, more uh, regional one. Yeah? And uh, you could see here uh, the highlight of the development for the first time ever, you know, United Nations Secretary General's Report 2016, year, next year, highlighted the Utah International Mountain Forum. You could see here that paragraph 39. And uh, you see, it's not writing about Utah University doing that. It writes about Utah International Mountain Forum uh, hosted the fourth International Women of Mountains Conference at Utah Valley University uh, in October 2015 to address the critical issues faced by women and children living in mountain uh, regions uh, across the globe and to provide a forum uh, to discuss gender equality. The next uh, couple of paragraphs also uh, uh, witness about the uh, featuring by this, uh, uh, again, United Nations, the academic skills of the students here, yeah? because uh, it highlights the final document, which was adopted uh, by the conference, and it was led again by the Secretariat. Here, yeah, I would like to highlight that Diane Torsak, also a non-traditional student, mother of uh, uh, four teenage uh, children, uh, 
so also a very active and uh, impressive personality. She was able with the five other students to uh, adopt the document two months after the conference online, uh, waging that uh, uh, dialogue between the participants. And uh, what was said here that uh, the outcome document contained the following observations. A, goal five could be achieved through uh, uh, strong support for improving women's rights and welfare, including women's uh, full and effective participation and equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision making in political, economic and public life. B. Successful implementation of target 6.6, .6, you see, one of the mountain targets here, yeah, could be achieved by supporting the vital role uh, that women play in the protection of the environment and uh, water sources, particularly as uh, custodians of uh, traditional knowledge that uh, builds resilience and allows for adaptation to climate change. And C. Um, with respect to target 15.1, women play a critical role in uh, joint uh, planning. Uh, as uh, promoters of innovative de uh, development and uh, uh, cooperation for uh, common benefits. For the first time, again, uh, the uh, student coalition was highlighted. That, and again, as uh, I said before, uh, there was no other uh, institutions or student uh, groups mentioned the document uh, from around the globe. Um, so uh, before the going uh, further, and uh, uh, we still have some time, yeah, Grace. I think that not so much, yeah. But uh, I have here quite uh, several slides, but we'll probably will go uh, really quickly. What happened during that conference? Um, uh, some setback, because uh, students worked really hard, very, very hard, in order to get the key uh, representatives from State Department, from the again United Nations, from the World Bank, and one institution was uh, missing here, UN Women. You know that uh, the institution which is promoting that uh, gender issues, but no, at that time they had uh, their own probably transition, whatever, from one uh, leadership to another one. So unfortunately, no one was uh, presented here, and they never ever again paid attention to the conference. Yeah? That's why failure. But a good uh, chance, again, to use uh, the uh, recommendation of the scholars that the students uh, uh, learn lessons in most effectively if they will have uh, some kind of setbacks or uh, uh, problems. How to uh, correct it and uh, as a result of that, you know, uh, find out uh, what needs to be done, achieve a, a positive result. Then as a result of that, they will remember forever. And therefore, our efforts. Uh, with Dr. Butler and with students since 2016 until now, uh, just one goal, to have language about mountain women, girls, families, included at least in one final document of the Commission on Status of Women. So what uh, they did, I like also to uh, share with you, but again, I have to tell that they, we didn't achieve that goal yet. Why? Because the final documents are again prepared and finalized by the states. So that level which we need to find out how we have to uh, manage you know, more properly and effectively. Yeah? So 2018, as you could see, 62nd session. Anyway, it took uh, two years for the students and uh, with Dr. Rusty Butler to go to those sessions without success. We were not able to participate in those activities. We were not able to do something substantial. Why? Because we will need to learn and study how the system works here. Yeah? But you no, know, 2018, it was a highlight. While uh, for the first time, students were able to host the parallel event. And for that purpose, they will need to study how they have to approach the NGOs in consultative status under the ECOSOC. Uh, which have that right to do that. And uh, as a result of it, they could see that the Russian Academy of Natural Sciences, as well as second NGO, they provided for them that right, and they were able to host the event titled as Education for Sustainable Development to Empower Rural and Mountain Women. One activity. Second one, much higher. Uh, there was a necessity to uh, uh, contact and uh, uh, build that relationships with a certain permanent missions in order to uh, host the side event. 
uh, side event. It means also the activity at the uh, United Nations headquarters uh, within the agenda of the UN, uh, again, uh, Commission status of women. And here they were able to do that uh, with the, uh, uh, again, help of the, um, our colleagues also at the Office for Global Engagement, Dr. Baldemir Lag and others, you know, to build relationships with the uh, permanent missions of Bosnia, Herzegovina, and uh, Uzbekistan, and students, as you could see here, the hosting that event, which is, which is uh, again, uh, moderated by the students here, and uh, have the dignitaries. Uh, another activity was also, they submitted uh, the written statement, 2,000 words long, uh, which was uh, distributed as official document of the United Nations. So, um, those efforts have been appreciated again by Mountain Partnership, and in 2019 uh, report of the Secretary General on Sustained Mountain Development, as you could see, uh, for the second time, Utah International Mountain Forum was highlighted as a, uh, uh, raising global awareness. Uh, for the issues affecting mountain women, uh, the 62nd uh, session of the Commission status of work. Great success, yeah, you see? Because students were able to achieve so much, and if you think about your resume, highlighting yourself, what you did at the United Nations is more than enough. The only thing again is missing, there is nothing in the final document of the, uh, again, uh, that commission, which is quite a huge and enormous task, yeah? So, uh, the same year, in July, they uh, did another efforts in order to achieve one more goal, which was not achievable during the Commission status of women, to make an oral statement. Because oral statement, it means uh, the students are able to speak during the general debates. When they're speaking alongside with the ambassadors, ministers, prime ministers, presidents, and whatever. Yeah? So, uh, it happened during the high-level political forum 2018, and so uh, the efforts of, again, Russian Academy of Natural Sciences, students were able to learn again how to do that, approach, build relationships, engage learning, and uh, Russian Academy of Natural Sciences was provided in one of the eight NGOs globally that right to speak uh, within three minutes uh, during that uh, 19th of July 2018, yeah? So, uh, students were able to do that. You could see that photo, uh, how the three of them are speaking in that uh, trusteeship chamber of the United Nations on that date. One of the students' uh, uh, photo is here, Samuel Lozinga, and uh, the presiding officer, uh, the uh, permanent uh, representative of uh, the South Africa is uh, introducing uh, the students. So 2018 was uh, very successful for the students uh, with the, uh, achieving their goals. But again, the main task was not resolved yet. Nothing was included in the final document. No, uh, at the same time, uh, more and more incentives for the students to do that. Uh, 63rd session next year. Um, uh, almost the same agenda. The only thing which is missing, no uh, side event with the uh, embassies. But it helped for us uh, to also understand better how to create also educational, uh, again, initiative based on that. And as you could see, uh, you could bring for that event, even the entire class. We are able now to bring here entire class. The uh, only thing that each student need to be prepared in a way that each of them have to have specific project, which is contributing to that agenda and uh, with the service learning, with research and whatever, how uh, what they do personally is impacting the uh, issue related to the mountain women. Yeah? So uh, here you could see 2000, uh, again, the uh, 63rd uh, session, 2019, again, another event. Um, I would like also a couple of, uh, again, uh, minutes to pay to this uh, uh, activity. Uh, International uh, Mountain Day, Mountain Day, uh, United Nations uh, has so many uh, international days declared, as you know, yeah, human rights and whatever. But no, uh, what I uh, uh, looked, you know, very carefully and studied and found out that there are not so many probably education initiatives which are using that. 
and using that. And for the first time, we tried to uh, summarize and uh, uh, in our academic paper outline, you know, how that uh, international uh, days they could be uh, one more experiential learning of uh, the study United Nations activities. In addition to the being involved with the UNIA model UN and also internships. That's why um, since uh, 2010, when students were hosting regularly the uh, international amount and day observations at the uh, UVU campus by expanding the uh, numbers of the uh, important uh, players, contributors to those events and uh, scope and range. Um, uh, as a result of that, as you could see that uh, United Nations and in particular permanent mission of the Kyrgyz Republic, uh, FAO, they paid attention in 2018 already invited uh, uh, leaders of the UIMF to come and to uh, contribute to the event which was uh, uh, which took place at the United Nations headquarters. So recognition of uh, the importance of that event and how students are able to do it. Um, finalizing uh, my presentation, I would like to say that following that uh, there is a target 4.7 the uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which states that by 2030, ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including among others, so education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality. You could see here, all learners, it means traditional, non-traditional, and even what is also becoming significant, uh, I, myself, and Dr. Rusty Butler consider ourselves also uh, learners and could be included in this group. And we are becoming a bigger group, not only uh, like a mentors, because we also are learning a lot of uh, um, things and a lot of, uh, again, specific features, how to implement it, uh, to, uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And it uh, uh, makes uh, that model quite great and uh, exciting, you know, for uh, everyone, uh, despite to their uh, ages, yeah. So, as a conclusion, yeah. So, inclusive co-curricular SEL model empowers all students professionally through affiliation to the SMD agenda. Students become full-fledged contributors and gain recognition for implementing the three mountain targets in interaction with target 4.7 of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. Then the model uses uh, simple and affordable educational tools available at any academic institution worldwide, including in rural and mountain areas, and including also in many uh, nations which are still in transition yeah, to the building of market economy and uh, uh, open societies. Therefore, its implementation could provide similar benefits for students, especially for non-traditional learners, many of whom experience educational or financial disadvantages. And uh, the last slide here, just uh, praise from uh, some of the uh, dignitaries. And on the left side, uh, the uh, permanent representative of Austria to the United Nations, uh, uh, Ambassador Martin Sajdik in 2015, when he visited the uh, UVU, had a very extensive dialogue, was uh, impressed. And uh, as you could see, he's uh, again uh, writing on that photo. My best wishes to the Utah International Mountain Forum. Uh, in so ably promoting the SDGs and the post to uh, 2015 development agenda. By the way, Martin Sajdik at that time was the president of the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. And the right side, this is a poster about the visit of the uh, His Excellency Machari Kamau, one of the co-chairs uh, of the Open uh, Working Group on Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, he uh, was also impressed uh, by what the students do and uh, uh, his, uh, again, best wishes here to the IMF and their pursuit of the uh, post-2030 development agenda. Okay. For oh, 54 minutes. Grace. Sorry, I left not so much time, probably with questions and answer. Eh? But yeah, uh, I'll be uh, open to any questions. Thank you so much for your presentation. Well, very appreciative of the insights you shared with us. If anybody has questions they'd like to uh, ask Dr. Abdurisayev at this time, you're welcome to raise your hand or send questions uh, to me in the chat. Um, and while I wait for people to submit questions, I guess I, oh wait, there is a question right here from Lindsay Ricks. 
Um, Lindsay, please feel free to ask your question. Lindsay, are you speaking? We can't actually hear you. Okay. Uh, I'll probably start, uh, stop sharing it. Or uh, should I share again? No, I think uh, you don't need to keep sharing, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, Lindsay, will it let you speak now? Okay. While we wait um, for you to send it in the chat, um, Alexander, I don't know if it'll let you speak either, um, but I did receive your question in the chat that I can share. Um, can oh, you go hear ahead. me? Yes. All right, sure. Um, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Abdujasaya, um, for speaking with us today. Um, I had a question. I'm actually writing a paper um, about naming laws in Kyrgyzstan um, and like how they act as both like a project of um, legibility and also um, like a cultural contestation. Um, so I'm not sure if you've heard of this incident um, a few years ago, there was like a publicized thing where a Kyrgyz uh, feminist tried to give her children like a matronymic uh, male name instead of the traditional patronymic um, because uh, their father was like not involved in their life. Um, mm -hmm. And it led to a lot of backlash and um, she was sued by the uh, civil registry office. I was wondering like what you thought about how um, how gender inequities are enshrined into like very like minute areas of the law, such as like what you can name your child um, and like how it's difficult to change that um, from your experience as like a lawmaker and ambassador for the country. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, uh, Alexander, thank you for your uh, question. This is a great question and it also uh, says about the specific issues uh, related to the gender. Yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. But you know that 15 years I'm already now working at Utah University and certain things maybe I'm missing, but no, I'll be glad to uh, look at and follow. But you know, uh, what is uh, important that uh, government is uh, trying to make a, a lot of efforts also, United Nations, uh, uh, United States, and other institutions are helping in uh, particular in uh, promoting the gender agenda. Uh, all of the laws uh, usually are, um, uh, again, focused on accommodating to the uh, obligations under the international laws, and in particular with the uh, gender equality. Uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of done in that area, but no, still uh, there could be uh, problems uh, with the implementation in particular in rural areas and the uh, uh, life of the communities because it's uh, uh, based on the traditions which are uh, quite strong still, yeah? quite strong traditions. And maybe uh, the issues uh, which uh, you are raising here um, uh, taking place. But uh, uh, we have a, quite a strong civil society groups and in particular women groups as well. And uh, I'm sure that uh, they will uh, again focus on those issues and will be not uh, uh, allowing uh, this uh, type of the things uh, uh, happen if uh, they go with the violation of the uh, rights. No. Um, uh, you know, uh, but let me again uh, maybe uh, try to find out, contact uh, uh, the people there and find out. And if you'll be, uh, again, in need of some uh, assistance on the, that matter with research, I'll be glad to help. Sure, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see, by the way, uh, now so much is written about it, uh, bride kidnapping, uh, many other issues. And why? Because of the civil society, because you no. Know, uh, women NGOs are very active. Uh, there is a lot of uh, um, financial uh, uh, programs, uh, aid programs are provided in order to deal with it. And I'm sure that during that commission status of women, we have uh, uh, NGOs which will come and participate as well. Um, uh, therefore, gender issues are in the focus. In the focus, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have another question from Lindsay in the chat that I'll read aloud. 
You highlighted Utah's direct diplomacy with Kyrgyzstan in the early 2000s at the start. Um, did Kyrgyzstan ever pursue similar direct relationships with other mountain states? If not, what's special about Utah? You know, uh, great question. And I need to say that as uh, the ambassador, I was in need to look at uh, in all of the directions. Yeah, uh, That's why uh, what uh, we, uh, again, built from the beginning, we uh, tried to build the similar relationships with the uh, Colorado, with the Montana, with the uh, Wyoming. Uh, for example, Montana already has uh, that uh, direct uh, partnership program under that, uh, um, uh, under the NATO partnership for peace and uh, uh, National Guard. So Montana and Kyrgyzstan, they work with each other. Therefore, my involvement there was uh, probably the minor one. Why? Because they already well established the partnership. But you know, we were uh, able to involve them in our projects here as well, yeah? In Wyoming, uh, uh, also that uh, paid a great respect to uh, one of the uh, ladies active there, Kandra D. She does a lot in order to facilitate cultural uh, diplomacy and cultural exchanges with the Kyrgyzstan and Central Asia. Every year she goes uh, to the special horse festivals there, uh, able to bring there uh, some the flavor of that uh, cowboy culture. Uh, by the way, she participated in many of those uh, uh, events there, uh, with the, uh, again, promoting the horse, uh, uh, horses and uh, uh, with, uh, other activities. By the way, she was able even to go to Afghanistan in the same way to promote that uh, cowboy culture um, from Wyoming uh, among the mountain communities in uh, Afghanistan, in Turkmenistan. Um, Colorado, we have uh, uh, connections, good one. Therefore, where it is uh, uh, working on its own, I'm just, uh, I was uh, looking uh, from time to time, uh, again, uh, being in touch with those uh, individuals and appreciate them. But in uh, the state of Utah, since 1999, this was a personal relationship which we were able to build with Dr. Rusty Butler when he invited me uh, there <clears throat> as the ambassador. And uh, after that, it uh, uh, again became uh, the part of the activities where uh, with his wife, they were able also to uh, provide a, a lot of resources. Resources, you see, it's uh, uh, something important. Uh, in a similar way, we uh, uh, worked with uh, Congressman Pitts and his constituencies, uh, because uh, in Pennsylvania, we also have, if not such a, I mean, tall mountains, but no, a lot of uh, places which uh, have the similar uh, challenges and uh, environment to weather. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, with Joseph Pitts in 2005, after that the change of regime, we had a plan uh, at the beginning, maybe to go uh, one of the universities there, like Elizabethtown, whatever, but no, it happened so fast. And uh, uh, at that time it was not uh, easy to do, but no, with Dr. Butler, we uh, were able like a blessing to go in that direction. And uh, as a result of that, to uh, implement some of the ideas, which as you could see, are uh, very effective working in um, for many of those mountain states. You know, my main now interest, the, uh, the bigger one is Appalachian Mountains. What we uh, again talked about uh, uh, Congressman Pitts, because West Virginia, look at this, what is happening now, Senator Manchin, yeah? It is a quite a great example that uh, the mountain issues in the United States are crucial. Therefore, and the uh, Appalachian Mountains, uh, different development, different uh, models, different outcomes in comparison with the Rocky Mountains. A lot of interesting things to compare, to work together, and also to work with the uh, rest of the world. Thank you so much um, for your response to that question as well. Does anybody else have questions they'd like to ask? Um, welcome to raise your hand or send them in the chat. While people continue to think of any last questions, I guess I'll ask one about whether there are any um, particular initiatives or projects born out of this these collaborations um, and conferences that you've been discussing specifically related to gender equity in different mountainous communities across the world um, that you'd like to highlight or that you think mm -hmm. have been particularly effective. You know, Grace, uh, uh, thank you for your, uh, again, 
uh, very good question, great one, yeah. Um, what I would like to tell you, maybe to focus more about the uh, essence of uh, the model, yeah. I didn't touch it uh, too much, but you know, uh, what is uh, again remarkable with model, yeah, that uh, uh, every new semester when I go to my classes and look at the eyes of my students, and in particular, I'm trying to look at the eyes of the students who are non tradition at age. Why? Because according to the studies, according to theories, yeah, uh, they are considered as a mature, responsible people and people who have a lot of experiences. Therefore, you know, my goal to find the right uh, connection to raise their interest. And if they would be able to be interested in what we are doing, then talk, what kind of interesting projects or initiatives do you have which you could contribute? And what there are, uh, each student has something interesting, you know. My main goal is uh, just to make sure that I'll tie that interest with the uh, FAO's uh, guidelines, FAO's focus, and voila, then you could see that how those projects are implemented by those students themselves. No need for me to guide. They could bring their peers and they start to leave, lead in uh, the direction until the full implementation and in this case i'm just uh, watching if there could be uh, some of the questions maybe there uh, which is exceeding their professional maybe background and uh, slightly to change it after that help them to report it properly at the un and if they will be highlighted then you could see that uh, that non-traditional students uh, they will continue to get involved you see during the women of mountains conference for semester, the students who were leading that efforts, they were not enrolled uh, in some of the, my classes because it's easier when they enrolled, you know, just to use that uh, grades uh, again through the uh, quizzes, whatever, to uh, provide for them uh, that incentives. In this case, they had a much bigger probably idea and uh, interest, passion uh, to that course and the model was able to provide it. As a result of that, as you could see, um, since 2011 until 2021, on the website, Utah International Mountain Forum, we have more than 350 activities uh, posted, and the majority of them are initiated by the non-traditional students. It's amazing. That's why continue to work, and uh, at uh, new communities, even I mean, uh, in those developings in Kyrgyzstan, now we are trying to work with the uh, students there, or Technological University, you know, to jointly observe the International Mountain Day and then after that go to the Commission Status of Women. A lot of things which you could uh, uh, help them to create because they don't have yet um, institutionalized club structures there. You see that. Clubs is essential educational tool in order for the students uh, get developed outside of the classroom uh, to uh, do multitasking, working jointly as a group, uh, work with the uh, faculty and whatever. And it makes a huge difference. Therefore, just move in that direction. It, it doesn't require the money. But anyway, one more essential, uh, again, uh, part of this uh, model that uh, student clubs are required to self-fund the activities. And can you imagine, I never ever thinking about getting grants myself and then to give to the students. They are raising that as a part of the requirement of the clubs. So there are a lot of uh, things still to continue to research, to improve, to develop, and then uh, see that new tasks, how uh, they could do that, and then spread uh, around. And in particular, in, uh, many of those nations, including Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyz Republic, it's uh, one of my main priorities. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for your response to my question. Uh, Joseph, are you trying to ask a question? You are muted. Let me see if you can speak. Okay. Am I muted? You're good now. Yeah, we can hear you. <clears throat> Just want to say to Ambassador Bakhtabek, uh, it was a wonderful presentation. And uh, we're very pleased to work with him. Uh, the Pitt Center for Public Policy at Asbury University in Wilmore, Kentucky sent some students and professor to the UN uh, with Ambassador Bakhtabek uh, 
few years ago. It was a great experience <clears throat> and we hope they'll be able to do so again. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. Continued support, unwavering support, always, and dedication. Yeah? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, does anybody have any final questions or comments to share with Dr. Abdi Sayev before we adjourn from what has been a very fascinating and uh, enlightening talk and conversation? Um, if there are no more questions, thank you so much, Dr. Abdi Sayev, for speaking with us today. I think we've all benefited greatly from your insights on gender equity, sustainability, and the student-engaged learning approach that you've been highlighting. So thank you very much. And thank you to those uh, who joined us today. Um, stay tuned for more information on our events in the spring featuring uh, Fridays for Future Youth Activist Anastasia Fomina and Nobel Laureate Svetlana Alexievich. And thank you again to Dr. Avdi Sayev uh, for his work. Thank you much, Grace. And good luck with other activities as well. I appreciate it.